Welcome to another quick photo editing video. If you follow my channel, you know that I still use Photoshop CS6, which has been the last version that didn't use Adobe's subscription model. And I'm quite happy with this version of Photoshop and seldom feel the need for new tools. The last time though, I felt that my workflow needed some boost, something that would help bring new ideas and creativity to it. If you use the same tools for many years, it can happen that you get stuck in some kind of a rut. You do the same over and over again, you perfect it, and at some point it's hard to progress further. And this is usually the time when I look around for some new technology and there's been a lot of development going on the last years. One software I was continuously watching was Illumina, which brings a lot of interesting tools with it, but it somehow didn't fit into my workflow. The last version is more set up to deliver a complete workflow from raw to finished photo, but I rather like to use a very minimal raw editing. Then bring my photos over to Photoshop to do a very selective processing. And just at the end of my workflow, I like to play around with plugins before I prepare my photos for web and print. Lately, I noticed that there was a new tool by Scalum around, which is called Lumina Flex, and it actually works with my old version of Photoshop and this way integrates seamlessly into my workflow. And this is exciting because it opens up new possibilities for my workflow and gives me many new tools to play with. Let's now head over to Photoshop and I show you what I mean. So if you install Lumina Flex and select to use it in Photoshop, it will show up in the filters menu down here in the Scalum software. And to use it, there are, I think, two possibilities. Basically, what you could do is you could convert your layer on which you want to apply some effects into a smart object, which you can do here, right mouse click and convert to smart object. And this way you could then, I think, go back into Luminar after the fact and yeah, adjust your changes. And yeah, well, I tried this, but I don't have the fastest PC here. And um, as you stack up many, many Lumina effects, uh, the processing takes a while. And yeah, with a smart object um, on my PC, it just yeah, didn't work out very well. So what I rather like to do and what I feel um, helps to speed up the process a bit is just make a copy of the layer you want to change and yeah, apply your changes there. That's how I do it. Um, usually with my processing, I don't go in and change any settings afterwards. I usually, if you've seen my other workflow tutorials, flatten down and rather change the opacity and go in again and do new effects. So this was in the beginning where I did a completely non-destructive workflow where you would keep all your layers, all your effects and you can go in back into um, some of your lower layers and effects and tweak them. That's one way to do it, but yeah, I rather work a bit destructively if you want to say. So both ways are possible, but I just do a copy and then I apply the Lumina Flex effects on this copy. So I go to Skylum, Lumina Flex. So down here at the bottom, there are some quick looks, which most of them, I think, in my opinion, are a bit over the board. So I don't really use them, but you also have the ability to later save your own looks here, which are maybe a little more attuned to what you want to do. So it looks quite similar to, to Lumina. So here's the image and I have a huge selection of filters on this side here. And yeah, I really, I haven't played around with all of them. So you have up here some of those AI filters, which yeah, I think many of the newer photo editing softwares nowadays want to introduce some AI into the post-processing. So basically the artificial intelligence works on your photo and gets a look which pleases the general public, I guess. But I'm not a big friend of just using such AI stuff to process my photos because I want to have full control. But it's actually not bad to play around with it and just see what it does. So just bringing it up to like 50 and it does a whole bunch of stuff. So it changes the, the brightness, the contrast, colors. So many effects are applied here based on some algorithms. And the thing you can now do is to actually selectively apply it. 
So usually this does a lot and I wouldn't just apply it to the whole image. But you can go in either now here in Lumina, you can yeah, paint in a mask manually. You can use a radial mask, a, uh, a gradient mask, and here, yeah, sorry, I have the German version here, and even luminosity masks. Or what I rather do because it's faster, I stack up a few effects here, just as I said, to boost the photo a bit. So to go a little bit overboard into a direction or a little past the direction I want to take the photo. And then in Photoshop, I selectively apply it. So I just use a little bit of the A Center Eye filter because yeah, it brings some more clarity and some more punch to the image. And I can also stack another filter, the sky filter, which will just work on the sky so it makes it a little more dark, contrasty and vibrant. And I don't go too far with those sliders. So one thing I like to do to this image, so you see it already has a little bit of a magenta cast here in the sky, there's some open glow, you have some deep blues and what usually works is if you have magenta in the image, you need something to balance it, some color contrast. And for this, you need some green. And there's a filter down here, improving the green. And if I bring this up, it will take the yellows or the greens and boost them, but it does it too much actually. So I'll just do a touch and here I can just switch the filter off and see what it did. So it just brings up the opacity and uh, not the opacity, um, the saturation and the vibrance of the greens a bit to balance those magentas in the sky. One thing which I actually like is to use this um, removal of color cast. You can actually use it creatively. So by going here to the manual, you can use it to basically tone the image by playing around with the strength you just bring it up very far and then you tune the color to see in what direction you want to go with your color cast. So you basically apply a creative color cast and then you bring down the strength a bit. And that's how I apply for this often. I just bring it up very far to see the extreme and I tune the, yeah, the direction or the details and then I bring down the strength and then the before and after. And what I can now do, I just use a gradient mask and I draw it down here in the sky a bit. Just like that. Finish this and now I can again bring up the strength a bit and just give a little bit more punch to the sky. And you see I don't use many filters because there are so many you could play around with everything here and just see what it does to the image. But I just uh, want to show you some yeah, general techniques and how you can integrate this Lumina Flex into your workflow. Let's finally just do this. Um, I don't know how it's called in the English version. It's um, image glow, I think. So I can bring up the strength, which makes the image a little bit more soft and gives it some kind of a soft glow. Um, I can change the temperature here, make it warmer bring it down and make it a little cooler and as with all the filters I don't want to do too much here and in the end what I can do here's a quick button where I can if I press I see the before and then the after so it's quite a huge change to the image and it's maybe a bit too far but that's exactly what I wanted I wanted to boost the image a bit to just bring some new ideas or yeah give me a look to compare. And now I go back to Photoshop and finish this up by applying it selectively. So after more than one minute of processing on my 10 year old PC, we're actually back here in Photoshop and here's the before and here's the after. And as I said, what I want to do now is to selectively apply it. And I want to apply it selectively for the changes it did to contrast and color. So I duplicate this layer and I set one to mode color and the other to the mode luminosity and I can apply a mask to both of them. And now I have the color changes on a separate layer and the luminosity changes on another one. And this is actually quite nice because now I have full control and I can say, for example, here the sky got a little bit too dark. So I use a gradient and 
I just draw down here so I don't have that much of darkening in the sky. But I still keep the color change, which I like. It gives a little more magenta hue here. But here in this part, it's a little too much. So I remove a bit of the color change I did, just a little bit, because um, using plugins doesn't mean you have uh, to end up with a radioactive looking image in the end. You can apply those plugins selectively and use them just as a tool to achieve the look you're after. So the before and after and also down here, this got a little bit too green. So I use 20% brush and remove just a touch of this color change and maybe also go to the luminosity and make it a bit darker again. So you see I have full control now and I can in integrate this process seamlessly into my workflow. And what I could also do now, put in another layer and continue to work here in Photoshop by just, for example, doing some dodge and burn. So using a soft light layer, let's zoom out a little bit and with like 10%, do some dutch and burn here darkening certain areas make sure that the reflection is darker than the sky which is important and which is something you should always look out for in your images especially if you use filters also during um, during the shoot if you use uh, graduated neutral density filters make sure that if you have reflections those reflections will end up a touch darker than the thing which they reflect so just doing some dodge and burn to finish it up. And yeah, I could get really creative here now. And yeah, this is what it's all about. So using such plugins, sometimes I like a little boost in creativity. So if you feel like you're a bit stuck with your processing, it's good to play around with some new tools and yeah, then try to integrate them into your workflow, which is what I'm now doing with this Luminar Flex. And using it doesn't mean this will now completely change the look of my photos. It gives me some new possibilities to process my photos to achieve the look I'm after. But my aim here is not to change that look. As with my other photo editing, I like to progress my images in little steps. And by using Luminar Flex selectively, I can do exactly that. Just maybe a bit quicker than if I would use only the onboard tools of Photoshop. I hope you found this little introduction to Luminar Flex interesting. I surely only scratched the surface in the week I was using it now and I'm sure I will find out more tools I can integrate into my processing and I will share it in the future. So don't forget to subscribe. See you.